time in this film, we're going to focus on the Virgin enthroned and also the coronation of the Virgin. So these two key moments in the Virgin's life where she is represented like a queen of heaven on a throne and wearing a crown. In this case, she's enthroned without her crown. And this is a work in terracotta by a Florentine artist called Benedetto da Maiano. So he was born just outside of Florence. And he probably modeled this in around 1480 either for a church in Borgo San Sepolcro or possibly in Pisa. We don't know. This really charming work is really engaging for the way that the Virgin holds the Christ child who appears to be kind of wriggling on her lap. And as you can see, this is beautifully installed here in the Gemelle de Galerie. It's raised up so that these figures rather appropriately look down at us. It's very clear that the artist intended it to be displayed in this way. And the Christ child looks down at us and he raises his hand in a gesture of blessing. But as you can see, he's almost naked, but he seems to be wrapped up in this kind of gauzy white piece of cloth. And to my mind, that immediately calls to mind the grave clothes, the winding cloth that he will wear at the end of his life after he's been taken down off of the cross. So there's something sweet and tender here, but also alluding to a future to come. And that anticipation of his death makes us perhaps think of the Virgin's lap here as, as almost like an altar. I mean, we've thought of it in our first film as like a human throne. She is in her, her body, also a throne for the child. Mm. But the altar is the place where in Christian worship, the death and resurrection of Christ are remembered at, at the mass or the Holy Communion or the Eucharist as it's variously called. And the priest would present Christ in bread and wine. Here, Mary is presenting Christ in the form of her child. And the altar is also a place which Christians understand as a place where they receive grace, which is to say the generous gift of God of salvation, not earned but given. Mm. And she's described here in this inscription as the mother of grace, which is just a reminder to me of the fact that the Virgin Mary is in lots of ways a divisive figure within the world of Christianity, because at the time of the Reformation, when the Protestant churches split away from Rome, one of the things that they were objecting to was the idea that Mary played a role in allowing that grace to be offered to the world. They wanted it to be focused on Christ alone. And the idea that Mary might have had a role, or any of the saints for that matter, and that they might be objects of devotion in statues like this was something that Protestants were very concerned to distance themselves from. And that would come decades later, after this work? Many decades after this work, but mm. works like this were very much part of what made them uncomfortable. Mm. In seeing the Virgin enthroned here, we're immediately brought into the kind of court of heaven, and I almost expect to see her wearing a crown. Instead, she wears a halo, which is a, a sign of her holiness. And in fact, this Christ child originally also had a carved wooden halo, now lost, unfortunately. But I think we should now take a look at an image that shows the Virgin enthroned, but also wearing the crown of heaven. Here, we're looking at another Virgin enthroned, this time a painting by a German artist, Albrecht Dürer, one of the most famous Renaissance artists. Interestingly, he's painting this in 1506 when he is in Venice. So this is a German artist working in Italy. And we see not only the Virgin enthroned, but she is in the process of being crowned. So you can see these sweet little putti at the top are lowering this crown onto her head. And that is an allusion to her role as Queen of Heaven, as she's often described in apocryphal texts. There are other elements of this picture that allude to different moments and different titles given to either the Christ child or to the Virgin Mary. You'll see at the lower right of the composition a very sweet representation of the young John the Baptist. And he's offering up a particular flower to both the child and the Virgin Mary who's grasping it. You'll be able to see if you look closely that it's the lily of the valley. This is a flower that is known to spring very early on in the season. So it is often associated with new life and in that sense is associated with Christ, with Christ's birth. Interestingly, it's also a plant that's associated with the Virgin Mary, not least because it has this very white color of the petals, which are associated with her purity. It has a very beautiful smell, which is also associated with the Virgin. And that association seems to come from a passage in the Hebrew Bible, from the Song of Songs. 
And there's a particular passage there which Christians later interpret as Mary speaking and identifying herself as the lily of the valley. To see this in images like it of the coronation of the Virgin is to see the great culmination, if you like, of her whole life story as she ascends into heaven and is enthroned there. And for some recent writers about Mary, that's actually presented a, a bit of a problem because she's so exalted, she's so much an ideal mm -hmm. of female perfection, as it's been understood, that she's hard to relate to. And many women say, well, how can she be a role model for contemporary women today when we're looking at someone who's a queen, and not just a queen, but a queen of heaven, mm -hmm. queen above any other queen? Mm -hmm. And I think at that point, it's important to remember her own words in the Magnificat, the song she sang when she was pregnant and first visited her kinswoman Elizabeth, in which she talked about how the humble will be exalted. This is someone of humble origins mm. from a small provincial town in Nazareth, and this is her destiny. And that's not meant to make all the rest of us feel alienated and beneath her. This is, in some ways, much more than just an image of Mary's exaltation. It's a promise. It's a promise of how all of the humble can hope for a similar celebration, a similar enthronement, a similar coronation, in which they too, following Mary, are gathered up into all of God's promises and enjoy the joys and the wonders of heaven. <laughs>